Welcome to the ENDOF Days Chronicles channel. It is the day when the Antichrist encounters Jesus, who is the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a biblical figure prophesied to rise to power in the end times, deceiving many and opposing God. Throughout biblical prophecy, it was foretold that a figure would emerge, someone who would gain power through deception and lead many astray. This individual would oppose and exalt himself above everything that is considered God or worthy of worship. In doing so, he would proclaim himself to be God, 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 4. The term Antichrist originates from the Greek word Antichrists, where anti dash means against or in place of, and Christos means Christ. Essentially, the Antichrist represents someone or something that opposes or acts as a substitute for Christ. This concept is rooted in the Bible, particularly in the epistles of John. The term Antichrist is explicitly mentioned in the books of 1 John and 2 John. It is stated that it is the last hour and that many Antichrists have already appeared, indicating the imminent arrival of the Antichrist, 1 John 2 verse 18. The Antichrist will progress from being a regional leader to a global leader and eventually become a tyrannical and glorified global dictator, even claiming to be a god. In Revelation 13, the Antichrist is symbolically represented as a beast emerging from the sea, which refers to the Gentile nations in the Bible. The Antichrist also possesses seven heads and ten horns, symbolizing his connection to and influence by Satan. According to Revelation 13, the Antichrist will suffer a mortal wound around the midpoint of the tribulation, but Satan will miraculously heal him. This man of lawlessness is described as someone who opposes God, sets himself up in God's temple, and claims to be God. These characteristics align with the broader concept of an Antichrist figure, someone who opposes and seeks to replace Christ. The meeting between the Antichrist and Jesus is described in Revelation 16, which recounts the pouring out of vials filled with God's wrath upon the anti-Christian empire and everything associated with it. These judgments are unleashed upon the earth, the sea, the rivers, and the fountains of water. Despite the devastating effects of these plagues, people continue to speak ill of God rather than praise Him. God's wrath purges the earth of evil. Both the sixth bowl and the sixth trumpet judgments are related to the Euphrates River and focus on militaries influenced by demonic activity. The meeting begins with the drying up of the Euphrates River, Revelation 16 verse 12. Some interpret this event literally, as it is believed to be the place where the Turkish power and empire originated in ancient times. The Romans considered the Euphrates River to be a secure barrier against potential invasions from eastern empires. During that particular era, the Euphrates River spanned approximately 1,800 miles 2, kilometers, in length, with a width ranging from 300 to 1,200 yards. 275 to 1,100 meters. However, if the Euphrates River were to dry up and transform into a road, it would provide an easy pathway for massive armies from the east, including nations like China, India, and Japan, to move westward effortlessly. Speculations arise regarding the motives behind these eastern armies moving westward. Some believe it is to destroy Israel, while others think it is to rebel against the Antichrist, a world leader based in Europe. Ultimately, they will end up fighting against God and his Messiah. As God executes the sixth bowl judgment, he is directing history towards the battle of Armageddon. The result of this vial is the drying up of the river, depriving the city of its sources of wealth, provisions, and other necessities. In Revelation 16 verses 13 to 14, three loathsome spirits resembling frogs emerge from the mouths of the dragon, Satan, the beast, antichrist dictator, and the false prophet. These spirits are actually the spirits of demons performing miraculous signs. They go out to the kings of the entire inhabited earth, gathering them together for the war of the great day of God Almighty. Signs and wonders are utilized by demons as tools of deception. The false prophet, referred to as the second beast in Revelation 13, plays a significant role in gathering the nations for battle. This battle is not a conflict between one nation and another, but rather God fighting against the nations of the world. The prophecy mentions three major conflicts, and this battle is one of them. In this context, we encounter the unholy trinity. Satan often imitates or counterfeits the things of God to portray himself as God. 
The unholy trinity, described vividly in Revelation 12 and 13, is a prime example. While the Holy Trinity consists of God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the unholy trinity consists of Satan, the Antichrist, as the second member and son, and the false prophet. The false prophet directs people's worship and praise towards the Antichrist, mirroring the role of the Holy Spirit in directing worship towards Christ. While the Holy Trinity embodies infinite truth, love, and goodness, the unholy trinity represents the exact opposite, deception, hatred, and pure evil. Although various Bible passages portray Satan in different forms, such as a serpent or an angel of light, he is described in Revelation as a great red dragon with seven heads, ten horns, and seven crowns on his heads. In Revelation 12 verse 3, the color red symbolizes the vicious personality of the great red dragon. The beast, also known as the Antichrist, is described in Revelation 13 and Daniel 7 as the second member of the unholy trinity. Although the Antichrist is explicitly identified by that name only four times in the Bible, he appears under various aliases. He is referred to as the one who brings destruction, the lawless one, the evil man, the beast, a fierce king, a master of intrigue, a despicable man, and a worthless shepherd. When he emerges, people will be drawn to him and willingly comply with his requests. The false prophet completes the unholy trinity, as depicted in Revelation 13 verses 11 to 18. Jesus specifically warned believers to be cautious of false prophets who may appear innocent but can be extremely destructive. The false prophet possesses the ability to perform great signs and wonders, such as bringing fire down from heaven. He erects an image of the Antichrist for worship, demands universal worship of the image, and executes those who refuse. Additionally, the false prophet enforces a permanent mark on everyone as a demonstration of unwavering allegiance to the Antichrist, denying God. Only those marked are permitted to engage in economic transactions, while accepting the mark leads to eternal death. By accepting the mark, individuals acknowledge not just an economic system, but also a worship system that rejects Jesus Christ. The number of the beast, 666, is revealed in Revelation 13 verse 8. The great dragon, Satan, is making a final desperate attempt to regain power, summoning his forces and spirits for one last assault. The three unclean spirits mentioned are the demons who assist Satan, the beast, and the false prophet through performing miracles. They persuade eastern kings, armies, and rulers from around the world to gather and engage in battle against the second coming of Christ. The outcome of this battle, referred to as the great day of God Almighty, is clear. It is the triumph of God, not of man, the Antichrist, or the dragon. Amidst the portrayal of the impending battle, there is a call to action to be prepared for the triumph of Jesus. Demons are involved in various activities throughout the Bible, causing disease, tempting people into immorality, and propagating false doctrines. During the end times, despite their commitment to evil, God will use demons to fulfill this plan. The term Armageddon, derived from the Hebrew word Armageddon, refers to the gathering of the kings and armies of the world at a place known for significant struggles throughout history. Armageddon is portrayed as a site of a great battle in the book of Revelation. The title Revelation of Jesus Christ signifies that the book unveils what was previously concealed. It fully reveals Jesus Christ and his prophetic plan, making it a fitting conclusion to the New Testament. The primary focus of the book of Revelation is to reveal the person and prophetic plan of Jesus Christ. The book serves multiple purposes, including providing encouragement to believers to persevere through persecution and suffering. It assures them of Christ's certain victory over the world and the devil. On a significant day, marking the beginning of the end of the Antichrist's rule, the world will witness extraordinary signs and wonders in the sky. The heavens will seem to open, and light will pierce through the darkness, as described in Matthew 24 verse 27. Ultimately, the Antichrist will seek to battle Jesus, as mentioned in Psalm 2, where the nations are in an uproar against God. However, God laughs at their rebellion and mocks them, declaring his anointed king upon Zion. The book of Revelation vividly describes the defeat of the beast, Antichrist, and the false prophet, who are cast into a lake of fire. This signifies the end of the Antichrist's reign, coinciding with Jesus' return.
It is not just an end, but also a new beginning, bringing hope and redemption to humanity. The defeat of the Antichrist reveals the enduring power of faith and the triumph of God's truth over darkness. After the Antichrist's fall, the devil is also thrown into the lake of burning sulfur, as stated in Revelation 20 verse 10. Following this significant day, Jesus establishes a millennial kingdom on earth, lasting for 4,000 years, during which he reigns with justice and peace. This period is often referred to as the millennium, and believers live and reign with Christ for a thousand years. After the final judgment, following the millennium, Satan, who had been bound for a thousand years, will be temporarily released and then defeated. Subsequently, the final judgment will take place, where all of humanity will be judged. In this judgment, both the small and great will stand before God, and the books, including the Book of Life, will be opened. Each person will be judged according to their works, as written in the books. Leaders who prioritize their well-being strive for fairness not only within their organizations, but also in society as a whole. We can observe Jesus as the ultimate leader dispensing justice on earth. He is driven to ensure justice for all. Are you taking any actions to make an impact on the world in terms of promoting justice? The importance of the book of Revelation is emphasized in this story. Before his death, Jesus prophesied that the Holy Spirit would reveal things to come to his apostles, John 16 verse 13. This prophecy was partially fulfilled through the teachings of Paul and Peter, but it was most completely fulfilled through the revelation given to the apostle John while he was on the island of Patmos. The book of Revelation contains more than 40 instances of the phrase and I saw, and the statement I was in the Spirit is frequently used throughout the book. John reports that he was instructed to record what he saw a total of 12 times. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this remarkable day as the chapter of the Antichrist comes to an end, we turn our hearts to you, seeking understanding and comfort. You have always been our refuge and strength. Guide us through these times of change. We pray for those who have been led astray, that they may find the true light and love of your word. May the deceptions of the enemy be exposed, and may truth and righteousness prevail. For the many who have lived in fear and uncertainty, we ask for peace. Let this day mark a new beginning of hope, faith, and love for all your children. Lord, in the midst of chaos, you remain our anchor. Help us to always lean on your promises, remembering that evil will never have the final say. Renew our spirits and let your love shine brightly in the days to come. May we come together as one, united in love and purpose, working towards a world filled with your grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.